experience the wonder, experience new life, a world full of color, stretches the sky, discover it all. I'm here on the Evergreen campus at Loyola University, Maryland in Baltimore. And I'm so glad that you're able to join us as we unveil this brand new building, the Fernandez Center for Innovation and Collaborative Learning. It's hard to believe that just 18 months ago we broke ground on this fantastic new facility at Loyola. It represents a commitment to collaboration and innovation that will not only benefit our Loyola community, but the entire city of Baltimore. We're so glad that you're here to experience it with us. Now let's head into the building. To start us off, here is Amanda Thomas. Thank you, Terry, and welcome to our newly imagined Beattie Hall. As you can see, while the classic and historic exterior of Beattie has remained fully intact, the interior has been completely transformed. My office and classes were here in Beattie for 15 years, and let me tell you, this interior space is completely unrecognizable. That being said, as you enter the doors from the quad, you'll be greeted with the former BD doors, hung as a symbol of the original building's nearly 100-year history. We're so glad that you were able to join us today as we began a new chapter in Loyola's nearly 170-year history. This day marks the addition of a brand new building located on our pre-existing academic quadrangle. These new spaces will provide our undergraduate and graduate students, as well as our faculty, with beautiful new spaces to learn, teach, collaborate, and continue to excel in their scholarship and development at Loyola. When you enter the front doors, you are first greeted by an extraordinary collaborative space. On the left, a seminar room, and directly across, a collaboration space with a beautiful view of the quad. Beyond these two spaces on each side are two active learning classrooms. These classrooms offer an innovative space for teaching, giving professors the chance to use high-impact teaching practices and students a personal learning experience. To tell us more about these new active learning classrooms, here's Cindy Moore. This is one of 13 active learning classrooms. There are six others similar in size and design to this one, with seating for 30 students, and then three classrooms that are a bit smaller, with seating for 24 students, as well as three seminar rooms that hold 16 to 20 students. You'll notice that there is no front of the room, or rather, the front of the room is wherever people are looking at any given time from chairs and desks that are movable and can be arranged in a variety of ways. So, this gives professors and students the opportunity to start on this side of the room writing notes for lectures or presentations on this whiteboard or move to this side of the room and present from the professor podium, which is also movable. And finally, professors and students can use these movable whiteboards anywhere around the room. The lightweight movable furniture makes it easy to have whole class discussions in a circle with just the chairs or in a square like this with both tables and chairs which can then be rearranged into pods where students can work on papers or projects. It's that easy. Thanks, Lewis. Like the furniture, the technology in the room is designed for a high level of interaction between professors and students and among students. Beyond some of the technology you would see in other classrooms, like a PC and document reader, the room includes interactive whiteboards, which allow professors and students to project a PowerPoint slide, for example, onto a whiteboard where the slide can be annotated and even revised. To make sure that professors are fully prepared to use the furniture and technology in ways that fully engage students, interested faculty applied to teach in Fernandez Center classrooms by submitting descriptions of how they would use the innovative features of the classrooms. Our upcoming pre-semester teaching enhancement workshop will include technology training for all professors assigned to teach in the building. These new active learning classrooms are truly unique 
and are going to provide all members of the Loyola community immense opportunities to learn in new and innovative ways. Immediately beyond our front entrance is the Forbes Idea Lab, a space with the goal of promoting idea generation and fostering creativity. Here's Wendy to tell you more about this exciting space. Thank you, Terry. As it says in the name of the building, the Fernandez Center is designed to provide our community with all kinds of opportunities to innovate and collaborate. That can be daunting. So to ensure that we all feel welcome, Fernandez is an inviting place. In fact, as Terry mentioned earlier, the Forbes Idea Lab, where we are now, is the first space that you enter when you approach the building from campus. The message to students is clear. This building was designed with you in mind. We're surrounded by whiteboards on all the walls and even on the tabletops. We're confident lots of brainstorming will happen here in the Idea Lab. There are also large displays to project onto and practice group presentations. That's the kind of dynamic, team-based work we want to foster here and all over campus. We can't wait until students arrive, settle in, and start to make the Idea Lab their own. Thanks, Wendy. When creating a new building, we wanted to ensure that students would be able to take advantage of a brand new and unique dining experience here on campus. Currently, we have three full dining areas and additional offerings. The new Green and Gray Cafe is unlike any of these locations, and we're so excited to tell you more about it. Here's Chef Dan and Lindsay Wynn from Loyola Dining. Loyola Dining Services strives to create incredible dining experiences for our students and our campus community. We offer eight different locations on the Evergreen campus that offer everything from tacos to sushi to acai bowls and smoothies. Today we're excited to introduce the Green and Gray Cafe, a new dining location designed specifically for and with students in mind, created from student feedback about their dining experience at Loyola. In fact, the name of the location was chosen by our students. The Green and Gray Cafe offers coffee, sandwiches, and crafted items. It's perfect for grabbing a lighter meal, or if you're in the mood for something in between meals as you're studying or working in these new spaces in the Fernandez Center. To tell us about the menu, here's Chef Dan. We are bringing our Parkhurst passion for local sourcing to the new cafe featuring local vendors, including Zeke's Coffee, Cloverland Farms Dairy, H&S Bakery, Towson Hot Bagels, and more. Our menu will feature made-to-order and signature sandwiches, featuring boar's head meats, also available are bagels and spreads, breakfast sandwiches, a variety of our on-the-go items, and assorted house-made pastries and desserts from our very own award-winning Loyola Bake Shop. We truly believe that this new dining location on campus will bridge a location gap where there wasn't a dining option available, and it's bringing a new cafe experience. Back to you, Terry. Preparing students for their future careers, their lives, and the new world of work is central to our mission and one of the pillars of Loyola's brand. Loyola's Career Center provides students and alumni ample opportunities to work with professional staff, make connections with career professionals, and design the steps in their path beyond Loyola. Up until now, the Career Center has existed within the College Center, housing our professional staff and a team of student career ambassadors. This new space dramatically increases the size of the original space while giving additional opportunities for continued student growth and engagement. Eileen Hebler and Olivia Zug are here to share more. Welcome to the entirely reimagined Rizzo Career Center, named for alumni Dan and Kelly Rizzo. Our former Career Center was in the College Center and is now located in the heart of this beautiful and brand new Fernandez Center. This two-level space is providing us with unique and incredible opportunities to continue the growth of our career services offerings for students and alumni. Let's start with the lounge. The Rizzo Career Center Lounge is a space unlike anything we have had before, creating a new location for hosting small to medium-sized events with alumni, employers, student groups, academic departments, thought leaders, and community members. Among all of these uses, it's a great spot for students to hang out. Not only are we using this space for career development, but we encourage all campus departments to request to use this space for their events and gatherings. This is a space for the entire Loyola community. Our Loyola Career Ambassador team is now comprised of 13 students, doubling our past team size. 
These students are trained in resumes and career development, but one of their main roles, to staff the Rizzo Career Center during our drop-in hours. To tell us more about what this means, here's Olivia. Thanks, Eileen. When you come by the new Rizzo Career Center, you will be welcomed by one of our student career ambassadors. Because of the size of that team was doubled, and with this additional space, we are doubling our drop-in hours. That's when students can come by, meet up with an advisor without an appointment, and get it done. This is a huge step towards achieving our goal of providing career support for Loyola students whenever they need it. I'm here on the lower level of the Rizzo Career Center. Another important use of this space is interviews. In the former Career Center, we had just two interview rooms. In the Rizzo Career Center, we are able to offer eight interview rooms for employers to interview Loyola students conveniently in the heart of campus. This makes finding jobs and internships even easier for Greyhounds, who can simply stop by for interviews between classes, meals, and life. Not only is this space larger than our old space, but it is providing us with ways to interact with our students like never before. We are extremely excited for what this new chapter in the Career Center will bring, and we can't wait to see what the future will continue to hold for us. Stop by the new Rizzo Career Center. It's the one-stop shop for anything career-related. Terry? Well, that's the first floor. You've seen the Forbes Idea Lab, beautiful state-of-the-art active learning classrooms, an exciting new dining location, and the Career Center. And we're really just getting started. But before we head upstairs, let's go outside to learn about the exterior design and the enhancements and sustainability that this project brings to our campus. So to start, here's Taylor from Loyola Sustainability. Thanks, Terry. Welcome to the brand new Green Roof Garden on the Fernandez Center. When exploring this new building, what's a better place to start than the top? This 2,100 square foot green roof garden conserves energy, captures stormwater, and cools the urban environment. And that's just the start. Inspired by the vision set forth by Pope Francis in Laudato Si, Loyola University Maryland strives to have an impact on the environment that will create a better world for future generations. In recent years, we have worked with partners across the university to create a campus that is more sustainable. And we continue to collaborate with faculty, staff, and students to nurture a culture of sustainability within our campus community. From its inception, we knew we wanted the Fernandez Center to be the greenest on campus. And when constructing something from the ground up, we had many unique opportunities to do just that. Advanced stormwater management features like the green roof, permeable paving, and the bioretention garden help protect local waterways by capturing and filtering 100% of the rainwater that falls on the site. That's great news for our neighboring Stony Run stream. And speaking of water, low flow sinks and toilets are used throughout the building. These fixtures will sensor and reduce indoor annual water consumption by 40%. Access to nature is proven to support our health and well-being. And in the Fernandez Center, you won't have to look far. Throughout 75% of the building, you'll have quality views of the Loyola Arboretum. This means it's truly hard to ignore the more than 2,000 trees of Loyola and all the beauty they have to offer. And finally, the building uses energy-efficient lighting and appliances throughout. But even bigger, the building is powered 100% by clean and renewable wind energy. If it seems like a lot, it's because it is. This will be the first lead rated green building on the Evergreen campus. And myself and the rest of the sustainability team can't wait to see what this new chapter will hold for us. Let's take a closer look at the landscape architecture with Om Kirkachar, a principal at Hort Copeland Mock over in the outdoor classroom. Myself, senior partner Carol Mott, Patrick Wilton, and our entire team of landscape architects at Hort Copeland Mock are honored and delighted to be able to join the Loyola team involved in conceiving, designing, and bringing the Fernandez Center to life. We at Hort Copeland Macht have been working on the Loyola University campus for the last 25 years and completed several landscape architecture projects. The goals of the project were simple, creating inviting spaces and environments that integrate seamlessly with the architectural design and can be used for gatherings of all sizes and would be welcoming to the whole campus community. Create a new and welcoming entry to the campus and its central academic quad from the East Cold Spring Lane, which would also serve as the connection to the city of Baltimore. Create a large outdoor seating area, a terrace, which connects to the Green and Gray Cafe, as well as the outdoor classroom. 
And finally, we wanted to develop a diverse planting palette of mostly native trees, shrubs, and perennials. Throughout the outdoor spaces, the planting design frames and enhances all of them. More than 50 mostly native trees were planted, as well as shrubs and perennials, and those help define the spaces, add shade, scale, color, and seasonal interest. Through the sustainability projects, as well as the landscape design, this project shines as an example of Loyola's commitment to the environment and our world. Back to you, Terry. Welcome to the second floor. Up here, you will notice a shift from the traditional classroom design with three additional active learning classrooms. We have open collaboration space, offices for the psychology and sociology departments, and space for faculty collaboration, and even new conference rooms. To hear more about how this space will impact the academic experience at Loyola, here is Cheryl Moore Thomas. Thanks, Terry. We are absolutely thrilled to finally be in this new space on campus. Across both the Fernandez Center and Beatty Hall, academics will evolve and find new ways to thrive, as Cindy spoke about earlier. With this wide array of collaboration space on our third and fourth floors, we strive to continue to inspire students and faculty to learn and teach in community, to collaborate on assignments and projects, and to gather in spaces that foster dialogue and connection. These spaces will facilitate the active learning style as seen in our active learning classrooms, and that will help us further our university-wide commitment to high-impact practices, the practices that engage students and have been shown to benefit learning and other significant outcomes for student success. The opportunities and the truly unique spaces that we have for academics will provide our students with a world-class experience that enhances what we've always been proud to call the Loyola experience. So thanks, Cheryl. With that in mind, I want to touch upon a group that we haven't mentioned yet, and that is our graduate students. We are thrilled to share this space with you as you are a critical component of our Loyola community. Graduate students attending classes at our Timonium Graduate Center campus, as well as on our Evergreen campus, were an important consideration as we look to create dedicated space for them. Space to study, to work, to gather, and to collaborate, as well as for the faculty who teach in those programs. So let's visit the third floor where Emily Quickle will tell us more. In addition to teaching undergraduate students, the psychology department has two graduate programs where we prepare future clinicians and professionals in the field of psychology. Our former psychology department offices were in Beatty Hall, and our new offices are located throughout this entire new building. Each office is large enough to accommodate a professor-student meeting or smaller group study sessions with professors, and they are brightly lit with natural light. Along the inside of the office areas are new conference-style rooms available to students and faculty to conduct study groups and meetings. The psychology department is thrilled to have the opportunity to be in such a beautiful new location, and we are excited to utilize not just the offices, but also the new classrooms and the new research spaces. The lower levels of the building house multiple research spaces that will provide new areas for faculty and student research. These multi-purpose spaces can support a variety of research types, with everything from exercise equipment for health psychology studies to rooms with those one-way mirrors you read all about psychologists using. But wait, there's more. Let's head downstairs to take a closer look at the graduate common space, a new area created with our graduate students in mind. Welcome to the graduate common space in the lower level of the Fernandez Center. If you remember, the former Beatty Hall had a space for graduate students to spend time between classes, study, work, or to meet with peers and fellow students. We couldn't create the Fernandez Center without considering this critical need. In this new and improved space, graduate students can enjoy maximum productivity and collaboration with whiteboards and displays to assist in any way possible 
to work with peers and classmates, as well as an area to work, study, meet, or relax between classes, research, or clinical work. It's a good place to get some thinking done. Thanks, Emily. Well, there you have it. A state-of-the-art, sustainable building for current and future Greyhounds to innovate, to learn, to collaborate, and to propel their careers forward. We hope that today you're able to see just what makes this building so incredibly special. But don't just take our word for it. The Fernandez Center for Innovation and Collaborative Learning is now open for the entire Loyola community to enjoy and experience. And we cannot wait for you to take the time to come to campus and explore all it has to offer. Now, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge and thank all of our generous donors for their outstanding support. Without you, all that we have seen today would simply not have been possible. So thank you. Thank you also for joining us today for this special event from our Evergreen Campus. And stay safe, stay healthy, may God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Discover it Discovery, discovery, oh.